for tapes, CDs, DVDs to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom. Write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Monday morning, June 26, 1978. Lake Hamilton Bible Camp, summer camp meeting being held in Hot Springs, Arkansas. This tape is with Chuck Flynn teaching on the release of the gifts. Lord, we thank you for that rest. We praise you for the beautiful anointing. Hallelujah. That you have a bold within us. And that strength and that presence of thy person. Use us, Lord, as we speak life unto thy word. That we will all be released, hallelujah, with the manifestation of thy life. And thy glory, hallelujah, will impart upon us with thy strength and thy person. Lord, we speak to you this day out of our hearts. And we love you. Hallelujah. We praise you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We'll turn to the second chapter of Acts this morning, beginning with the verse 1. Looking to the believer's life, the strength of the believer is in the spirit of the Lord in the degree of yielding unto the anointing of the presence of the Lord. For we are the temple of the Most High God, and in this area of the tabernacle anointing, you have five tabernacles. You have the tabernacle in heaven, in Hebrews 9. You have the tabernacle of Moses, beginning, beginning with the book of Exodus. You have the tabernacle of David. You have the tabernacle of Jesus, John 10 to John 17. And you have the tabernacle of the temple of the believer. Then, of course, in the millennium there is another tabernacle. Here we're dealing with the, the five groups of those five tabernacles of the temple. In John 14, just as an introduction... Jesus mentioned, I don't want my loved ones to be troubled. I don't want your heart to be troubled. I don't want the entrance of my authority over you. He called it the heart. I, I don't want that which would allow me to enter into you, to fill you with my capacity and my person. I don't want your heart to be troubled. Many of us think, well, now that means that there are certain circumstances that would make us worry. And Jesus said, well, I don't want you just to be concerned. That, of course, is obvious. But what Jesus really meant, he said, I don't want anybody to veil your heart to stop me from entering in fully into your temple. I don't want your heart to be troubled. I don't want you to be uncertain and to be in a deceiving way. This is the original in the intent of the Lord Jesus. And he knew that right after a believer and a person believes and they're justified by faith and, and the blood of Jesus cleanses their life and they come into the sanctifying force of the presence of God and the Word of God begins to feed them, then the next point of attack is to confuse their hearts and trouble their hearts so they will not allow the Lord to fill, fully fill them and they keep back certain areas of religious tradition and satanic light. And he deals with this all through the New Testament. The tremendous burden upon the Lord which is portrayed through the anointing of the Holy Spirit till it comes to a climax in Hebrews 5 and he says, Oh! guys. He said in verse 11, he says, 
my, you, you come to a place where it's hard for me to tell you any more about the revelation of Jesus being your high priest. Because you're dull of hearing. We think, oh, the Bible's got everything in it we need to know. Oh, no, it doesn't. Because dull of hearing will keep you from receiving that you can have the words here, brother. But, oh, my, the, the receiver is the one that limits and veils the word. That's what the Lord dealt with in 2 Corinthians. He said, they veil the face. The veil came over the heart. And then the veil was on the word. When Moses came out of the mount, the glory of the Lord, first they put a veil over his face. Next, the veil spiritually became a part of his heart. And then the word was veiled. And in our day, it's just in reverse. He's loosening the veil. He's taking the veil off of the Word. He's taking it off of our hearts so that we can receive the Holy Ghost and the deliverance and the anointings of His fully filling of our life. Hallelujah. Every area of our life has to be dealt with. If you think well, just one session of victory is all you need? No. Every time. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is God dealing with us in certain areas. We progress. He'll deal with us in the home. He'll deal with us with our finances. Deal with us in every area of our life. Our emotion. Then He'll deal with us in our relationship with our loved ones. And then He'll deal with us on a higher level of, of those over us and the fellowship with us, the saints. He'll deal with us to be concerned with others. He'll deal with us in the ministry to know how to help others. He is continually working in us. Like what the brother said, but just allow Him to keep working. Amen? And that's the reason now. He said, Nothos. He used the word, Greek word there when he said, you're dull of hearing. You're the one that keeps back the revelation. He said, here, I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to, to impart to you. And all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost just, I give up. He said, here, I want to explain to you the greater revelations of Jesus as the high priest. But he says, you're dull of hearing. Nothos. It means by former teaching, you have smothered out, you closed your heart's door. By former teaching, by the tradition of that which is easier, that which you can label, that which you can, can really, it, it's a lot easier to control. Actually, the word is control. The God has given us dominion. And so instead of taking and allow the Spirit of God to come upon us to get dominion, take dominion in the earth, then the people of the Lord have to be taken and brought under control. That's why there are certain areas of, of the music that, that uh, is, uh, you know, there's areas of music that will set people free, or there's areas of music that will keep people as robots. You've got the nice stayed type of music. And that keeps a certain group of people from going on in, raising their hands, and being free. And you got on the other side the heart, the more of the beat for the youth that'll keep them as robots and just numb zombies, Christian zombies. And then you've got the if you have the creative that which is of the spirit that will cause the heart to crumble. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Now this is why Jesus said, Now, let not your heart let not your door be clogged up by tradition and by former teaching. Allow the Spirit of the Lord to teach you. Learn of me in that famous scripture that most of us know in Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 31. Learn of me means allow me to teach you. Jesus said you need teaching. And he said, I want you to know that I'll teach you my ways. Hallelujah. Allow me to teach you. I want to lift off of you the spirit of heaviness. You that are laboring. You that are heavy laden. And he picks us up from Isaiah's vision in Isaiah where he saw the Lord high and lifted up. It was confusing to Isaiah to see the Lord high and lifted up. And then later on the 53rd chapter when he saw the vision of he that is marred and he that is wounded for our transgressions and we did not desire him. And Isaiah knew it was the same person. How can these things be? The 
the beauty of the high and the lifted up one and the beauty of the suffering one. Hallelujah. The wonderful revelation is complete then, see. And this is why the child of God is, is admonished to come in to that, the anointing of that thorough bringing forth and arming ourselves with the mind of Christ because of the things that he has suffered. We arm ourselves. In other words, the mind of Christ is your weapon to realize, to fully realize that your heart's door is opened up to the trust that God has put within us. And that trust begins with uh, John 10, 17, where the Lord says, Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. We give of ourselves completely unto the Lord, because we know His love for us. So John 14, I just want to start that with you as a, a complete foundation when we come into the spiritual walk of the Lord is that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost and the door of your heart is very important. That's what the Lord deals with. That's why He works with us in the Gospels is to prepare the door, to prepare the entry of His revelation of His person. And when we come to the spiritual manifestation and the freedom of the gifts of the Spirit, if we do not lay this foundation solid and strong and potent, you'll miss and you will, you will be invaded upon by former apprehension and caution to where you are not solid in that yielding completely and throwing wide the door of your trust in Him. Hallelujah. That He'll not give you a stone. And the reason he said, I'll not give you a stone, is that he meant the false stone. He'll give us his stone. And the Holy Ghost, the gift of the Holy Ghost, is the stone without the hewing of man. It's the stone out of the mountain, friend, that caused the nation to crumble. And that's what Daniel saw, and it's the stone of his presence. And he is the rock. Hallelujah. He's the foundation stone, and he's the headstone. He said, I'm not going to give you a heavy, false rock, a tradition. I'll not give you a stone that will be hung around your neck to drag you back. But he says, I'm going to give you a stone of life. A foundation stone. And what he meant was, I will be in you, the foundation stone. Allow me to fully fill your life. Let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. The word believe there means receiving all that I say. Believe means to adhere to, to walk in, to come into the very being. If we believe it, we, we come in and allow him to completely fill our lives. And he said, in my father's house are many mansions. And he used the Greek word mone, M-O-N-E. And he says, there are many mansions in my father's house. Now the house of the father is the body of Christ by the resurrection. And those who walk in newness of life are those who have come into the house of the father. And they are the mansion of the Lord. The word Monet. And then later on in that 14th verse, the 14th chapter, he says, My Father and I, to show you the love of the Father. Now the love of the Father is that which brings forth a trust when it comes to the anointings of the gifts of the Holy Ghost. You'll find that Satan is so clever that he uses every positive principle and turns it into negativism. The fundamentalists who feel it's their banner to fight the charismata or the anointings of the presence of the Lord, which we call the gifts of the Holy Ghost, I believe it's nothing else than just the presence of Jesus taking hold of a person's life. It's the personality of the Lord. It's His attributes of prophecy, interpretation, it's his discernment. It's his healing. It's his anointing to bring forth his wisdom. 
It's not something apart from Jesus. See, everything that he is saying here, I'll come and make my abode within you, then the world says, oh no, that's not of the Lord, that's of the devil. See, we need love instead of the gift. No, Jesus said, it's because of the love you receive it. Glory to God. And this is exactly the reason why the enemy turns every positive principle of teaching that the Lord brings to his people to give them a solid walk and your feet shall not be taken, neither shall you be overcome with sudden fear. And fear is the opposer of the presence of the Lord, which released the gifts of the Spirit. And Paul told him, right in two verses, Stir up the gift, Timothy, the gift of the Holy Ghost, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, and they are attached to each other. Paul implies that the spirit of fear is a great opposer of the gifts of the Holy Ghost. God hasn't given you that gift. Be opposed. Some people have had that gift. Just to, every time they have that little chip, that little gospel chip on their shoulder. Every time tongues is mentioned, there's a great defender of the faith. Backwards. That's right. Boy, they've got the scriptures down and their spirit rises up. What we need is more love. Yeah. <laughs> devour you to pieces so the humbleness of your heart to allow the Holy Ghost to come upon you is to allow the presence of Jesus to know that the manifestation of Jesus life within you is the gift and is the fruits of the Spirit if you see it any other way you'll be perplexed the enemy will try to defeat you after you're used in the Holy Ghost there will be all kinds of opposition. But when you know it's Jesus Christ within you, it's his manifestation of his life. And that's why John 14 is so important. He says, in my father's house are many mansions, and the word is Monet. And then he says, my father loves you, and to prove his love, he says, my father and I, and the Holy Ghost, he implies that, will come and make our abode within you. And the word abode, is Monet, the same word he used for mansion. So you're the mansion of the Lord. Oh, I thought I was going to get a mansion when I get to heaven. Oh, you'll get more than that. But let's not put, put everything in heavenly places. Bless God, we got a little heaven to go to heaven in. And I like that old hymn of the church. Uh, Here's heaven there, where Jesus is. It's when Jesus fills your life. It's heaven there. Hallelujah. <laughs> so praise God, get into the stop and the glory comes out. And that's what the presence of the Lord, that we have this anointing in earthen vessels. Hallelujah. And that's why the Lord said, Now this treasure is in earthen vessels, and you're the mansion of the Lord. I have come and made my own Monet. The ladies know the term Monet. It's a type of adornment. Or it's you, that's just a secular term for jewelry and so forth. But he uses that Greek word, Monet, which means you're the mansion, you're adorned with my presence. Hallelujah. You're the mansion of the Lord. And you allow me to build within you my fruits and my gifts because they're both essential. When he used them as he taught Peter, Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Then Jesus taught him. He says, Now, Peter, I want you to know, Thou art the Christ. He's the anointed one, the Son, the disciplined one, of the living God, the creative one. That's why it was so important, that foundation stone to be within us. He is the anointed one, as to give us power, to discipline ourselves, to release the creative word. And every gift of the Holy Ghost must be released vocally. The vocal cords is so important. Or the vocalizing of that which God brings forth. Is that which he speaks by his word through us. And that's why it's very important that the word, hallelujah, not return void, but the expression of faith and victory within the life of the believer you will get to where there is a, an anointing of wisdom and faith and power 
and just to speak it, you will find out that the very thrill of living is to prepare your own foundation for the day. I'll be teaching more on the counsel of the Lord during the night season. But during the day, you'll speak a foundation for you and your family to walk on, to live in. The creative word is very important. It's a little different from, as others are saying, well, just know that everything uh, will happen all right. Well, it's not especially in that realm, but it is in the realm that everything that happens is under the permission of the Father. Mm -hmm. Pilate told Jesus, he said, you better talk to me. Your life is in my hand. Well, what Jesus said was very important for you and I. For Jesus said, you cannot do one thing except to be permitted of my Father. Mm -hmm. Pilate didn't want to hear that one, but hallelujah. My life isn't in your hand, Pilate. My life's not out here in the world's hand. My life is in his hand. And nothing happens to me or my family but what the Father permits it. Let's praise God for that. Glory to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Put a wall of fire around every home. Put a wall of fire and loose my brother. Loose my sister. We open our hearts to thy presence. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. Blessed are we this day, Lord. You reveal this unto babes. You reveal this unto us. We praise you for it. Thank you, Father. The revelation of the Father. Is that which Jesus said was very important. Because he said, this is the promise of the Father. This is the revelation of the Father. And the Father promised this to the Son in their conversation. And the foundation of the world. Jesus was pondering in his spirit like Rodin's thinker, that statue of the man is thinking, looking out all over the universe. Son, what's on your mind? Well, I'm just concerned about how to build your house, Father, so that you can dwell in forever. Second Chronicles 17, he told, I think it's First Chronicles, maybe, he told David, or told Nathan, he said, Tell David, I've gone from one tent to another, from one tabernacle to another. And our modern vocabulary would be something like this. I've just gone from pillar to post, and I'm looking for some people that I can fill. <laughs> Hallelujah. With my presence, where I can rest. See, not only are we emphasizing the rest that we have in Him through the gifts of the Spirit, but we allow him to rest in us when we release the gifts of us. See? That's the thing that is the primary thing. Father, rest in me. Rest in me. How does he rest in us? Thus saith the Lord, laying hands on the sick and let them be healed by his anointing. Bringing forth the discernment of the Lord, speaking and setting them free, coming forth with the wisdom of prophetic anointing, one of the most dormant gifts that was given to the church is the gift of wisdom through the gifts of the Holy Ghost that are spoken in the people of God. And I loose that gift of wisdom. I loose it in you, and I loose it in me, I loose it in the whole body. We loose the gift of wisdom. We loose it, Father. Let's all do that. We loose discernment. We loose wisdom. We loose the miraculous. <coughs> we loose the words of knowledge and all the expression gifts. But, Lord, we thank you that all of them will be wrapped up in thy divine wisdom. Hallelujah. Holy Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Because here, his life, his abode is within us. 
I want to live within you. I want to rest. I am gone from pillar to post. But Jesus is thinking. He said, Father, he said, I'm, I'm concerned about the foundation, about the house. And I'm to build with every believer the living stones. The father said, well, son, do you think you can lay the foundation? The Bible said he was crucified before the foundation of the world. Now, son, do you think you can lay the foundation? He's the foundation stone. Jesus said, yes, father, I know your heart. You're not satisfied with the blood of bulls and goats. It's written in the volume of the book of me. I've heard the volume of the book. Who is the volume of the book? Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 12 that each one of us, the word volume means a part of a whole. And every one of us are a volume, a part of a whole. The eye cannot say of the hand, I have no need of you. So we're the part of the volume of the body. And we're the volume of the book. Hallelujah. And if you don't, uh, you're not comfortable with the term book, then look in 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 2 and 3 and 4, where we are written upon in our door. Our heart is written upon by, not with ink, but by the Holy Ghost. And by allowing the Holy Ghost to move upon us, the book's being written. <laughs> Praise God. And then he writes another book of remembrance of that which he's already written on our hearts. Hallelujah. As we discuss it together. Amen. Those that fear the Lord in Malachi 3. Those that fear the Lord and speak often of his name. A book of remembrance is recorded. Amen. So watch what you say. Hallelujah. <laughs> now this is very important. Why am I taking time to lay this kind of a foundation? Because of the security that Jesus laid when he taught it to Peter. He said, Peter, first of all. What you're saying is a revelation of the Father, and it's not the revelation of flesh and blood. Now get that in your noggin and get it good, Jesus is saying, that when I give you the Word, don't you give credit to flesh and blood. And don't you allow the enemy to come against you and say, that's you doing it. It is you doing it. It is you yielding. But the Father's revealing it to you. Because it's building up me. Amen. And so that's the primary workings of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Ghost is to build up Jesus and not to give you or I the occasion to show off spiritually. Amen. Boy, we've got so much in a rut that if brother or sister or so-and-so don't get to, to show off on Sunday morning, we haven't had a good meeting. We could, we could camp there a little while. So that's the other side of the picture. And our primary effort here this morning is to create a body recognition that Jesus fills his body. And when we realize that and receive that as a revelation of the Father, then we will discern the body. And every time the Spirit of God moves, there are several. You think God just picks out this one or that one? No, the Holy Ghost moves in a whole congregation. And someone can really come forth and jump the gun now and then. Doesn't mean they're the only ones that's been given. There's another message that could be given to fully explain that which the Lord is saying to the congregation. So it's very important for the leadership to be sensitive and to not try to hurry a meeting so that we know what the message the Lord is trying to get for. God told me, he said, son, you can study. You can, you can go into G. Campbell Morgan and Spurgeon. And I don't mind you studying and seeing what others had for their generation. But he says, if you really want to know what I'm talking to my generation and to your generation, which is now, he said that message was for them and it's beautiful, but it was limited. Now I want you to listen to the gifts of the Holy Ghost in my people. And that what will release the anointing that I've given you to project for this hour. And most of the ministers are going back into other revelations trying to, to put a round peg into a square hole or opposite. And preaching things that, that are out of date. 
Whoever taught us to preach in Bob Our Sermon three points and you're through anyway. <laughs> Throw it in the illustration. Preaching's going to change, friend, because congregations, the enemies tried to use music to deafen the ear of God's people. One way he's tried it is through music. But through music, in the historic churches, David Ingalls, who is a great songwriter in my estimation, and the anointing of David Ingalls was given by prophecy because I was the one that God chose to release him three years ago. But that man told me, he says, the, and the words that he, are, he is writing are very good and building up into the body of Christ. There are others that will be releasing, and some of you that will be, re, be released in the dimension of creative talent. This week, get ready. Hallelujah. David Ingalls told me as he was, uh, I was in his home, he was playing his last album. And he said, Brother Chuck, he said, all this, now this is the choir arrangements, and we've got so many orders, we can't even keep up with the printing of the orders we're getting for the choir arrangements of those tremendous faith-building songs and delivering songs. He says, you know who's ordering them? The Episcopalian churches, the Presbyterian churches, and the Baptists, and so forth. He says, I don't understand it. I said, Brother David, I understand it. I've been preaching. I've been, God's been telling me that he's going to cleanse their blood. I'll get into that later on. But the blood speaks, and it means cleanse the message of the historic churches. And the people are going to hear it through music, and they're, they're going to cleanse, and they're going to devour their clergy. Either they shape up or ship out. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. And God is moving on. You think God's moving on the clergy? No, he's moving on the musicians. And that's why Elisha said, Call me, get me a musician. What do you call it? Uh, minstrel. The armies came to him and said, we have no water. What are we going to do? We can't fight without water. And the army of the Lord needs the water. And the prophet of God says, all right. The gifts of the Holy Spirit have been held back because we need the minstrels. And the minstrels release the gift. I'll get up to minister and the prophetic word will be so so hard to release. I'll just say, oh, people, let's praise the Lord. Start singing. When they start singing, the minstrel anointing comes and the prophet begins to move. The anointing of the prophetic word begins to move. Hallelujah. The gifts are released. And that's how it's going to... One of the ways, there's many other ways, but praise God. God is releasing his presence. And that's what he told Peter. He said, Peter, flesh and blood does have revelation. He said, flesh and blood did not reveal this unto thee, Simon Barjona. In other words, I want you to know that later on the enemy will try to say that this is some kind of a... that you thought it up. And there's many people that have been stymied just by that that reverse psychology that the devil uses upon them and they're like little lioness in Peanuts comic strip they got their little security blanket spiritually <laughs> they put their little security blanket in their mouth instead of speaking the word of the Lord I don't want to get in the flesh <laughs> see it's well it's unreasonable and anything the human heart doesn't want to do, we have the ability to resist the devil. But see, when it comes to spiritual things, oh, I don't want to get in the flesh. I want to be all of God and none of me. If the Lord wants me to have any gift of the Spirit, He knows where I'm at. He knows where you're at, and He'll leave you there, too. <laughs> It's humorous when you talk about it, but it happens every day. Yeah. Gospel rocking chair. 
Don't tell me how to seek Holy Ghost. I've been seeking the Holy Ghost for 20 years. I know how to seek the Holy Ghost. <laughs> the power and the presence of his anointing when you establish yourself first of all that that confession of faith thou art the Christ the anointed one the son of the disciplined one of the creative word within you hallelujah that's a revelation of the father it's because the father abides within you and Jesus said all right there's two things that are happening now the fruits and the gifts that have come forth one is Upon this rock I'll build my church. So we're in a building program. And that's what Jesus was worried about. Father, how are we going to build a building? How are the stones going to stay together? I don't want to start something and have the universe say in Luke 14, have everybody else say he started a building and couldn't finish it. And that's why in Zechariah the prophet comes forth and say, when they come forth with the headstone, we cry grace, grace unto us. It's because the Father's given us grace in releasing his fruits among us. The fruits of the Holy Spirit, the love, the joy, the peace, the long-suffering, the gentleness, the goodness, the faith, the temperance, the meekness. All of these things within you and I keep us together. Hallelujah. So the fruits of the Spirit build the house of the Lord. And the gifts of the Spirit, they're the battle. And after the Father said, all right, I want you to know that the fruits of the Holy Ghost, he said, by their fruits you shall know them. And Jesus said, what did you say, Father? The Father said, by their fruits you shall know them. Oh, he said, that sounds good. Can I tell him that? Father said, you can tell him anything I say. By their fruits you shall know them. In other words, by the fruits of the Spirit, they are the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. And when they release the fruits, and when they release the anointing of that fruit, hallelujah, then that security of anointing builds the body of Christ. That's the house of his rest. That's the place of his refuge. Praise the Lord. The authority of his power and his glory. Thank you, Jesus. And that's because it's why it's very important to the Father to move within you with love, to move within you and I with peace, to move within us with patience. Because his treasure is in the earth and vessel. And he said, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus he went back to that solemn look and the father said now what well he says you know Lucifer says boy the enemy is going to be after that house to tear it up because of the universe the father says well he says I promise you that the Holy Ghost will come upon them and allow him to move upon them and they will receive the weapons of their warfare, which are not carnal, but they'll be filled with your life, which is the gifts of the Spirit. The Spirit shall wield the sword of your mouth, and the Word shall take effect, and every ability of your presence will be released through the individual. And they will conquer the enemy. You will lay the foundation of that victory, and they will confess it and build on that. They will continually be drawing from the foundation upward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's why he that is under us, hallelujah, he that is the everlasting arm, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Now this is the ability. Jesus said because of the gifts of the Spirit, because of the manifestation of my presence within you, I am the Christ, the anointed one, to bring discipline, to speak through you, then you must have the fruits of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit abiding within you. You're like Nehemiah on the wall, you have the troll and you have the sword. You cannot just build with a troll. You've got to 
warfare and get the enemy off of your back, hallelujah, while you're building the wall. Some people that just study the Word all the time are not fulfilling the complete battle of the Lord in their life. And that's why some people just use the Word as a defense doctrinally when they could be having the sword of the Spirit to buffet the enemy. And if you just use the sword without the trawl, then all you got is power gifts without ethics, without Christian character, you're sharp, you're cutting, you give people gospel karate chops, bless God, why don't you have faith? And you feel worse when you leave than when you can. Because they build on the premise, their ministry is built on the defeated premise of the people of God. And I don't like that. Bless God, I'm not a defeated foe of anybody. I mean, I'm talking about the Christian body. And I want somebody to preach on that which I am a deficit. I want them to preach that which I can walk out on. And when I leave that word, it is created within me. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's watch that approach. We build because, in other words, if we have to minister pre-programmed, that bless God, everybody's half backslidden and not making it. Listen, Jesus, when he spoke, he spoke according to that which the Father hath given you to me. Hallelujah. He said, you're precious in my sight. And he gave him something to walk on. I'm sure there's balances here. But I feel that the anointing of God, it's better to believe and to discern the body of Christ who Christ died for and speak it, praise God, that the presence of the Lord is within his people. Hallelujah. Because, see, that approach is a hangover in the gift of the Holy Ghost. If you really have the gift of the Holy Ghost in prophecy, brother, you're going to speak it and command hell, fire and brimstone on God's people. And every time you get up to be used of God, it's going to be negativism and wrath and disappointment. I'm talking about getting in the habit of these things. Now, when we come, there is a seer anointing, but brother, you won't even have to defend that. But some people have a certain type of negativism with their own spiritual egotism that when they're used of God, it's always cutting to the quick. Nobody's living right but me and them, Aunt Susie and us four no more. So don't get in any habit that way. Yeah, but you should give forth that old Jeremiah. And well, yeah, sure, that'll come. But praise God, when that anointing hits, the saints of God will be edified just as well. Hallelujah. But there's ways of saying things. God said, don't you beat my sheep. You say what I want you to say. And when Paul grabbed Timothy, he didn't grab Timothy, bless God, but a nap of the neck. You better get right with God. You neglected the gift. Paul says, Timothy, I want to put you in remembrance to stir up the gift. It was firm enough. Hallelujah. I want to put you in remembrance to stir up the gift. There's ways of saying things. Oh, yes, many times the Lord will show me that there are people that need a little shillelion. <laughs> Get the precious son, speak to him. So when you speak to him, that, that which God will do in him, it creates life. And they repent and they change. Give them something to change with. There's none of us that know that we're, or that has, you know, I mean, that we're so deceived that we don't know we're doing wrong. I mean, everybody knows. They just want to give me something to step out on. Hallelujah. Well, I hope you appreciate this. Because if, if you have a, a foundation, and that's what he's saying. Now, when you release the gifts of the Spirit, know that you're building. 
be positive, be brief, give it forth in a building manner to build faith, to build love, to build meekness. The gifts of the Spirit is to build with, not tear down. But when you build, hallelujah. Well, there could be a, a word of challenge involved with it, but you understand what I'm talking about. Speak out the building. Hallelujah. And then the release of the battle. The gifts of the Holy Ghost. There's that presence of His power and His anointing. And therefore then, as His, His presence takes over. See, He's the baptizer with the Holy Spirit. So he said, now don't let your heart, you're the mansion of the Lord, don't let your door be closed. Open your heart, and now trust me, and allow my spirit to teach you. Hallelujah. I believe Glenn and Irma was with us that a few years ago, and there was a brother named George, or Daryl Hahn and I, was teaching on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and we're praying for people. Many of the brethren were helping us, and they come over to me, and they said, we have a real hard one over here. He's a hard nut to crack. Someone said, help us pray. Or, boy, people were just receiving right and left. And let's all maybe join together. Because I trusted those brethren. They, they praised God. They were experienced. And so I said, well, brethren, let's just agree together. Maybe we can all help him. And I said, well, Lord, just show us what is really, what would help this brother. Because I didn't feel any definite hindrance, just of great hesitancy. And, um, a real attack, a remorse in the, the brother's ability he, he, himself. He just, that self-confidence, and they just beat to a shred. The Lord says, all right. He says, you tell the brother this. I said, George, you've said some things in your life that you didn't mean. You've even cursed, and you've hurt your loved ones. And when you said those words, you lost your temper, and therefore... You didn't mean to say that. The enemy took over your tongue. He said, yes. And I just, oh, praise God. Positioned myself and I said, now, George, in the name of Jesus, you get that righteous indignation <laughs> and aggravation against the devil because he moved you and pressed you to say things that you didn't want to say that would hurt your loved ones. Now you turn that to the good and you release your tongue in the name of Jesus to say things that Jesus wants you to say. In the name of the Lord, release the gift of the Holy Ghost. He began to speak in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Because they let that release. But there had to be a function from within, a determination. Hallelujah. He saw it. I've said things I didn't want to say. Now, praise God, I'll yield my tongue to Jesus. Hallelujah. And the wisdom of the Lord will be expressed to you. Hallelujah. And so that is where, praise God, the Lord is moving. Now, let's read from Acts 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. That's the unity of the body. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them. Put around the word cloven, Psalms 1, meditation. Meditation and cloven is the same. He that meditates in the law day and night is the one who will speak the cleansing of the Holy Ghost. The word meditate means to chew the cud, which is taken from the clean animal, the cow, which has cloven feet. So cloven foot or feet is a sign of cleanliness. When you read the word, you're clean or you're being cleansed, and that releases the gift of the Holy Ghost within you, gives you a complete rest and a complete dependence on the presence of Jesus within you, which releases the cloven tongues as a fire. And that's why the Bible uses the word cloven. It means you're a clean 
Now, I don't like the word animal, but let's say you're a clean vessel unto the Lord. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, that process of cleansing, it does not mean you're clean as a standing and as an individual. Because the Holy Ghost then moves within you and reveals things that need to be refused and rejected and renounced. But the Spirit of God comes upon you to start that process of cleaning up the temple. Don't feel that, well, I'm not ready or anybody's ready to have the process and the anointings of God in your life to yield to them. Pray in the Spirit daily. Builds up your most holy faith to release the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, come back to this part of the teaching to review, and then tomorrow we'll go on into the very presence of the Lord, the dealings of 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. Why was 1 Corinthians 13 there? And the dealings of the ministration, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit to bring forth the ministration of the kingdom and the gift of the Holy Spirit to sustain the Spirit's power and the presence and the attributes of Jesus within you. And that which is the anointings of the Lord. And we'll also have the workshop on release. I want to now point you to a, a personal testimony as we release ourselves in the anointings of God. 1 Corinthians 14. My wife Marianne and I were in the ministry some 8 to 10 years as pastoring. She thought that, and not in a quenching manner, but she felt that the gifts of the Spirit, in interpretation especially, was for the more honored few. There are many that feel like that if the gift operates, that they should not have the gift if it operates through someone else. I do not hold that opinion because of scriptural evidence. I believe the potential... Because of the presence of Jesus within you, the potential of every gift is at your command and release. Otherwise, we start bickering and, and fussing and wondering which gift we got. Jesus said, would you hush? You got me, you got everything. And that's the same way when and he deals with us as priests, as God dealt, Jehovah God deals with his priests in the Aaronic priesthood. They were standing around and said, Bless God, we don't have any land. All the other tribes got land. In Ezekiel 44, God said, All right, I don't want to hear this anymore. He says, I want you guys to know that yes, you don't have any land because you got me and I have the land. And see, and so God said, I'm your possession and I'm your inheritance. And I don't want to hear any more about this. You teach the people to praise me and I'll see that your needs are met. Because you don't have your name on a certain dotted line there's no sign bless God you don't have the land Lord. you got it praise the Lord you will possess that inheritance and so that's what Jesus said don't be wondering oh, brother Chuck I've heard in, in innocent like and I'm not putting down I'm trying to teach now he said now I want I, or, or people will say oh pray for me to see what gifts I've got friend if you have Jesus and I say this respectfully. That anointing of God, and when, as the Spirit of God comes upon you, you're speaking in heavenly language. That is the first one of the ladder. That means the potential of every gift. As the need arises, you can release it. Of course, there's an order. Of course, there are those, those that discipline and order that we all cannot release it in the same meeting. That is reasonable. So there is wisdom involved. And there's love involved. So praise God. So my wife was praying and she said, Lord, I would like the gift of interpretation. The Lord says, you already have had it. And so he gave her the scripture, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 13. And in this portion of scripture, it's very important. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. This is a command. Wherefore? He says, even so, in verse 12, For as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye may excel 
to the edifying of the church, and please underline that, to the edifying of the, my ministry. No, the church. But when Marianne told me this, she said, you know, I see it as a command. She said that an unknown, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, pray means that he may interpret. That means desire. The root meaning of the word prayer here is desire. Jesus went down into the water when John the Baptist baptized him. He was praying. It doesn't mean he was petitioning. It means it's a hard part, so it means that he was desiring onward. When he was praying, the disciples came to him in Luke 11, 1, and they said, Lord, teach us how to desire, is the original Greek word there. They had seen many people pray, but there was something about this man that desired the Father. Hallelujah. Teach us. How to desire onward the Father's praise the Lord. Prayer means it's sort of an off thing. Possibly God will hear. Possibly, oh, I hope I'm praying right. You know, petitioning. But Jesus said, no, that's not that which is communion. I want to desire the Father. Hallelujah. I want to desire onward. Desiring onward is the original word there that Jesus used here. Desiring onward, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue, I command him that speaketh in an unknown tongue to interpret. That's what Jesus is saying. And you know, the minute Marianne told me this, I, the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, I want you to study, get into the Word, and have release classes around the world. I want you to raise up leadership that is already potent in the individual's life. The potential is the word I want to use there. It's already there. You release it. You have the opportunity to release. He says, I trust my people and they'll release it when they're given the opportunity. The sheep will release. All the shepherd has to do is say, okay, praise God. I want you to release the full power of the Lord within you. We use the word shepherd as that which Jesus speaks through his ministry. And the anointing of the, the great shepherd who gave himself for us. But the authority of life is within you. You have the presence of Jesus. You have received the foundation stone. And now I want everybody to put their feet, two feet on the floor. Set back in your chair. And let's release the workshop of anointing of the gifts of the spirit. It's a command. All right, I want to just give you this point. The Lord dealt with me and he said, Now, if you speak in an unknown tongue, desire to interpret. If you interpret, desire to move in prophecy. If you prophesy, desire to move in word of knowledge. Word of knowledge, in other words, the gift that was there, just keep on releasing the steps of anointing and the gifts of the Spirit. Now, in with this comes in a more mature manner, we'll dwell upon this briefly at another session, is the attitude now, when you interpret, some of you have interpreted before, some of you moved in prophecy and are being used in that dimension. Now, there comes a time when there's a possible, not a quenching, but a holding, because you're used to and you're knowledgeable of that which the Lord wants to release, Allow others who are more hesitant to be burst into the rest of the release of the gift of the Spirit. That's the problem we're having now in charismatic circles is there are, there are some that have been, and by going ahead and releasing, they tend to not realize that the body is being held back. Now, when you have your release substantially, then it encourage others who are just beginning to learn. And that's why Glenn and I are very uh, concerned about all of us here, that we have the opportunity to release the potential of his presence within us. Amen? And so that's why we're having this release workshop. All right? We bring our minds now into subjection to the Holy Ghost. First of all, know that the Father is speaking to the church his body, his loved ones. 
And he's speaking through the individual. He'll always use a channel. And the Holy Ghost spake in the Bible, Acts 13, 1, he used an individual. So what is the Father saying to his people? And therefore you'll speak it in the first person as if God was speaking through you. This is that full trust in the security that the presence of Jesus is within you. I want you to repeat after me. I have the presence of Jesus within me. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. They're dwelling within me. This gives me peace. This gives me trust. This gives me the release of vocalizing their presence to edify the house of the Lord. I will yield. I will rest. I will battle. I will build by the fruits of the Spirit, by releasing the gifts of the Holy Ghost. I will rest in the Word, rebuking all fear. I will speak with a humble heart, I will allow the Lord to loose me to the edifying of the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right, now I want you to speak in tongues, and as you pray in the Spirit, all together, see, we don't want later on, there's some people don't want later on to just have a message and an interpretation. This is a workshop. Maybe that's the way it'll be done in maybe a worship service. But here, let's all give the message in tongues. And then as we give the message, then later on, as the Spirit moves upon us, each one will give the interpretation or prophetic word. Let's start with those gifts. Many other gifts will be released here this morning. And when they're released, the word of knowledge, raise your hand. I feel that someone possibly is ill in their back or some other thing that God might show you, and we're going to see God heal and deliver in a beautiful way. Hallelujah. We loose the gift of the Spirit. Loose my brother. Loose my sister. Lord, I thank you that you've chosen to abide within us. We rebuke the revelation of flesh and blood. We loose the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Father that you trust us by filling us with your presence. We release the trust of the Lord. We release that you bear witness to us, filling us with the Holy Ghost, prophesying through us, bringing forth discernment, bringing forth wisdom, bringing forth miracles, bringing forth words of knowledge. We love you, Jesus. He live us, son de la maha. Praise the Lord. Now, just put your hands in a comfortable position of receiving. You don't have to have them way high or way low, but just in a medium, uh, medium uh, just sort of a, a relaxed position. Because uh, we are not robots or mediums. The anointing of yielding is upon you now. And the glory of God is, going, is speaking through you as the Lord speaks. And you'll... Hallelujah. Release it. I have given you the Spirit. I have given it to you with power and with fire. I say unto you, it is a gift. And many have taken the gift and set it on the gift. Many have it reached into it. It's like a big box of candy. There's many layers of candy within the box, but many have only taken the top piece. You've only spoken in tongues. You've only exercised that gift. I say to you, get into the box. That's right. Do not hide it into your dresser. Very Do not good. put it in a jar and just sneak it out and come it. Thank you, Jesus. I say, reach into the box. Go into the deeper layer. I say, you will go into the, and use all these layers, and it will be edified, and, it, and you'll find That's it. That's right. Are the of candy, but there's many fruits that are good. Good. Beautiful. I say to you, dig down into the box, and then you get into the bottom there, you find there are stronger gifts, there are ministry gifts, there are prophetic ministries, there's evangelistic ministries, there's 
They're preaching and teaching ministry. They're my gifts that I have given to you that I want to flow through you. Do not be worried about your flesh. I have given you the fire, the same fire that Elijah called down to burn water. It'll burn your flesh. Don't worry. If the fire is coming to cleanse you and to bring you into perfection, everything is to bring you into perfection, and it will be my glory. Thus says the Lord. Amen. Beautiful. Praise you. Praise you. All right. What is the Lord saying to his people? Be brief, be positive, love the spirit. I'm not here by word of knowledge that I receive, and I'll not talk them out because I'm going to intercede for them also in prayer. But there are some here who have a fear of commitment. They're afraid that if they release into this, the Lord will take them over, they'll look foolish, and I'll say to you, my children, be able to look foolish for the Lord. But when you stand and your mouth comes open, you'll no longer look foolish, but you will look blessed, blessed, for it'll be Jesus that comes foolish. Oh, God. Amen. Take that as an admonition now. The Holy Ghost, see, He knows your heart. All right? Now, you release the gifts. Let's, let's allow these babes to be released now. Amen. Okay, some of you that have never been released before begin to speak out. What is the Lord saying to His people? Hallelujah. That's the admonition of the Lord. Just don't hold back. Hallelujah. Just a few words, but just let it get your release. Maybe later on you'll be giving a few more words. What is the Lord saying to His people? Praise God. See how those woven together beautifully. Joy and then joy picked it up. Thank you, Father. Someone else. May I say unto thee, my children, this day, that to me, for I have set a table before you, a spiritual table. Yea, I say, the matter says, come and dine. Yea, and I say, I will quench these things. You're uh, with the spirit of uh, living water, and yea, I say to thee, move in the in the stream that I have set before you. Flow with me, and I will see you through all things, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I see that in the vision, and God is saying, quit waiting around, angel deep, get out to your knees, and then take the plunge right under yes. your feet. Because when you come up, you'll be drinking it, you'll be spewing it, you'll be splashing it on those that need salvation, yes. even those that need healing. Get out in the yes. Room. Right, amen. Thank you, Lord. That's beautiful. All right, go ahead. Get out of it. Come on out. Release it. Oh, the anointing's here, folks. Amen. He'll not give you a stone. Just release it. Uh huh. Amen. That's good. All right, someone else had started. That's fine. You continue. Good. Move out. I have many things for you. Hallelujah. Uh huh. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. See, praise God. Good. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. Keep going. The love. Oh yes, the spirit of the Lord. Someone else. Lay aside his doubt, 
something you just need a little boost with, the laying on of hands will loose you. Come forward. Maybe the musicians could uh, just begin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Now we loose the ministry of laying on of hands. There is that release that when we touch you, and I I feel that this is the occasion now, hold off just a moment, the occasion now is to touch your forehead. The forehead is the spiritual eye to release the gifts of the Spirit. And as we release the forehead, that is the intercession for others. Those that prayed over Jerusalem, God sealed them in their forehead. So well, this is the perception why hands are laid on the forehead. Now when we touch the back of your head, that's all the inward strife and insecurities and fears and perplexings and bruising. All of that will be healed. As we touch the back of your head, your emotions are going to be healed and your nervous system will be healed so that you can have a peace to give up the authority of the Lord. So at this part of the meeting, is unless the Lord moves in his way that we're always relaxed with, uh, there will not be a word given, but you allow the anointing of laying on of hands to release you, to have you flow completely into the area of that capacity of anointing God has given. All right? Lord, we just thank you now that you'll loose each one of us for the power of the anointing of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We thank you, Father, for that anointing for that peace, for the tranquility of thy love and thy joy. We loose, my brother, we loose, my sister, by the power of God. Hallelujah. Heal of our son, deliver the young, deliver the most kind of Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The song of the Lamb is what we've been hearing. But you who have the you ladies, when that spirit of the Lord moves on you, sing, sing. That's the song of the Lamb coming forth. Sing it unto the Lord. Don't hold back, but release and sing. That's the joy of the Lord being brought forth in our midst. The song of the Lamb being revealed unto us. Release it and sing it unto the Lord. Thank 
song of morning be turned into joy, and clad yourself with a garment of praise, where the Lord most high is worth. Let your spirits raise in songs of rejoicing, as he entered his holy we the veil is rent into it. That which you feel is the Shekinah of the Lord. And you may enter into his very throne. Just come and bow Come and bow before. Shall we all bow before him? This is only a little touch of the glory of the Lord. God has a mighty army. Many of them are hidden under the rocks, but they're going to come forth. As the Lord is delivering his people and purging his people, he can entrust them with this kind of glory and this kind of power. We would destroy each other with the power of God that he wants to give us if we are not delivered, if we are not set free from pride, if we're not set free from arrogance, if we're not set free from the things of the world. He wants us to be set apart unto him. He has spoken to us this morning in beautiful words. The girls have sung unto him their Messiah, their Savior. This is not any ordinary service. Glenn and I have gone to ordinary services for 50 years, Pentecostal services, and they have been wonderful and beautiful. But he says, I'll do a new thing. We do not have to sing the three songs and take up the offering and do the things. We want every one of these services to be led by the Spirit. It's only those that are led by the Spirit of God that will ever make the mature ones that will ever come into that part that Romans 8 says, the manifestation of the sons of God. That means maturity, people. Many people have 
hurt that term. And people, the Christians, the sheep are afraid of it. But God said it in his word. And he is going to have a people that are cleansed and pure and perfect. And when he says, go, they won't hesitate. When he says, run, they won't hang back. When he says, pray for that person, heal that hospital completely, they won't say, oh, we can't do that. Because they will know it is him in them. It is the Holy Ghost in him. It is the Father in them. And when these three are in us, totally, 100%, that is the manifestation of the power of God, of Jesus Christ in this earth. And that's where all will be healed. All will be delivered. Those are the overcomers. And that's what this campground is for, to get people... This is the preparation. We are in the days of preparation. We are in the days of restoration. Our bodies are being restored. We do not have to fear Satan. We need to fear God. The fear of God is to hate evil. I just praise the Lord for this unity of the Holy Ghost. We need the fruits of the Spirit to operate the gifts. And then we don't hurt anybody. The fruits of the Spirit are very important. And it is very important for us to know the flow of the Holy Ghost. How is he trying to flow today? Now, if you, if you listened real carefully as those interpretations or those prophecies came forth, there was laying one thing on top of the other. And, and then we had the total worship of the Lord. When we minister unto the Lord, then we don't have to worry about ministering to people because God will come down and minister. But we are here to minister unto our Father. We are here to minister to Jesus. Say that again. When as they ministered unto the Lord, the Holy Ghost spake. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And I feel that the Lord would have me speak something uh, just shortly that we have received the word of the Lord today. and We've received instruction. We've been edified. We've been uplifted. We've been blessed as we blessed him. It's one thing to receive. And it's another thing to walk in that which you've received. Amen. And as I was praying up here a while ago, the Holy Spirit just came over my feet. And the Lord spoke to me that I was to lead you people in a confession that you will walk in what you receive this day. Mm -hmm. And if you don't mean this, don't confess it. But if you mean it, and if you confess it, you will be made an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we're going to break. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. For tape, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Tuesday morning, June the 27th, 1978. Lake Hamilton Bible Camp and Conference Grounds Summer Camp Meeting being held in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Chuck Flynn is the speaker of the morning. There, is, there are some things that the Holy Spirit would like to have us touch on that we, we mentioned yesterday, just a matter of review. Some just had come in uh, through the meetings last night and some today. So we appreciate every effort that's been given to this conference and the teachings and praise God, the anointings upon our brethren have just been sisters and been wonderful. We thank the Lord for it. What we're laying a foundation here is in the personality and the attributes of the Lord Jesus 
and his desire to commune with his body. The desire of the Father is to prepare a resting place. The covenants of David had to do with the house or the throne of David's greater son, who through the resurrection would provide a house for the Lord. That's in 1 Chronicles 17, verse 17. David saw that. He says, You've spoken of thy servant's house for a great while to come. We'll get back to that portion of Scripture. So the body of the Lord is in the eternal program of God. Now, it's in the book of Isaiah where it speaks of this body. And I'd like to have you, to have you underline that. And uh, it's the verse and the chapter is not that clear to me right now. If somebody knows that, uh, it's around 40, 50th of Isaiah. I have it underlined. Though Abraham, no, it's not. Let's see. Uh, got it here. All right, Isaiah 63 and verse 16, speaking of the church, mentioning this body, this group, God is raising up unto himself. Doubtless thou art our father, though Abraham be ignorant of us, and Israel acknowledgeth us not. Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer, and thy name is from everlasting. Though Abraham be ignorant of us, and Israel acknowledge us not. Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer, and thy name is from everlasting. So these covenants of God have to do with the culmination of the body of the Lord that which the Lord will bring forth in his body, the stone, the foundation stone, the headstone, the stone out of the mountain. Hallelujah. This is the, the anointing or the vehicle that God is unction, has ordained an unction within you and I to have dominion in all the earth. And so in Hebrews 5, we mention the dullness of hearing in verse 11. You have a tremendous teaching in the book of Hebrews and how he is bringing out for the high the comparison of the Aaronic and the Melchizedek order. So he's laying a foundation for every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men. He brings forth the comparison here, and then brings out, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. So this is the order now. If you go back to Acts 2, I don't mean Acts 2, but uh, Psalms 2, this similar proclamation is given. Let me read here verse 4 and 5 in, in Hebrews 5. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. And put down Psalms 2 verse 7. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now there are some strategic psalms that the book of Hebrews is using as the groundwork of debate. The great provings from the writings of David to bring forth that which God is doing in the body. So Psalms 2 is one of those great pivot points. Psalms 1 also we'll be dealing with. 
Psalms 110, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. We think, oh, some of these verses, God must just have sort of shoved them in there. It doesn't seem like there's a continuity at all, but there is. Because the Lord is continually on His mind. It's just like when you go to this body of water out here and you would take a smooth stone and throw it out across that body of water. How many have had a stone skip about four times? And maybe seven. <laughs> You've got a good arm. That's the way God's revelation is in His Word. He'll throw that stone, hallelujah, of stumbling and to many but a rock of offense for you and I, hallelujah. And He'll toss that out upon the waters and praise God of eternity and it skips in Revelation. Every now and then you'll, you'll see it hit, hallelujah. It's a beautiful example of God's touchdown revelation. Skipping, ricochet. And so this is why he brings forth these precious jewels of anointing that we can build upon and the Holy Spirit can go back and pick up his word and continue to expand it. It was given graciously to David, blessed his generation, but in the generation of our Lord and the generation of Paul and Timothy, there was a greater expansion of the word. Amen. So see, it was not just held to dispensationalism, but it is according to the revelation of the Father. Hallelujah. And this is the hour that the Father will reveal His Word to become the backbone of the child of God. He's going to rule with a rod of iron. That rod of iron means that his, that rod is hollow and His glory shall flow through it. And it will become the backbone of his people. We, I, I like that song, God's Not Through With Me Yet. That's exactly, but some people just don't know how much God's not through. <laughs> I'm telling you, the power of God is moving and we're going to have a backbone that will just be wonderful. But look out. Hallelujah. Because he said this treasure is in earthen vessels, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7 has to do with the rod of iron, this earthen vessel. The earthen vessel there means in the Greek that it is a an adobe pipe. It's not a vessel that's closed up. The root meaning of those words are that here we are an adobe pipe loose, open at both ends, and in itself is of no obvious advantage or benefit, but when we are connected with each other, the treasure flows through the earthen vessel as an adobe pipe is put by each other. The glory of God flows through us. So what God initiates in your life it will flow through, and as you give, you have initiated giving in someone else. As you come forth with that intercession and that mighty hand of God flowing through your life and deliverance, power, and anointing, you're initiating that in somebody else. As Paul the Apostle shook that viper in the fire, there were some barbarous people, and they were watching him. God didn't have that time to just send them all out to some seminary and some training institute. But they were barbarous and they had, that means they had no scruples according to that which was happening, except they did know a balance of right and wrong. They said, this man must have done wrong. He's escaped the shipwreck. He's escaped the mighty storm. But vengeance is mine. <laughs> In other words, the wrong, what you reap, or what you sow, you reap. The wrong has caught up with him. Therefore, a viper has bitten him. The viper is about six inches long, and the snake, large nail size. And Paul shook it in the fire as he was gathering kindling wood. And when the heat of the fire came near him, he was bitten. But the Apostle Paul, in an everyday expression of faith, 
shook the viper in the fire, and his very bloodstream beat the word of the Lord. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hallelujah. And the bloodstream beat the rhythm of God in his spirit. Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel. Casting out the devils. Hallelujah. Lay hands on the sick. Raise the dead. Praise God. Surely you. Freely you receive. Freely you. And this man had that heartbeat of God upon him. And the very words of the Lord commissioned his body to be under the restraint of the protection of the Lord. And his bloodstream had divine healing. Divine health. And because of the commission of the words within him, he shook the viper in the fire. But the barbarous people, Dr. Luke, the Holy Ghost says, Now, Luke, I want you to write what happened here. You know, the Holy Spirit is very wonderful. And through the administration of the Lord Jesus, the Holy Ghost says, Now, Luke, I oh, the Lord loves you. And you're a physician. And Luke wrote a word that is so beautiful. The Holy Spirit used the background of this medical doctrine. And see, therefore, I'd like to emphasize that, that your person, you are not a robot, but the Holy Ghost will use you. And someone else might have a, a wonderful phraseology when they're prophesying or moving in the gifts of the Spirit. And bless God, maybe you and I just got that old southern twang or uh, hallelujah. What our background is, is going to come forth, and the Lord's proud of it. Now, see, I want to emphasize that. Because there are some people that feel their education has been limited, and they'll hold back the revelation of God. And it has nothing to do with that which you feel is limited. You let the anointing touch you, and you're not limited. But God will use your person. Oh, there was nothing so sickening as some of these men that tried to act like Sister Catherine Kuhlman. <laughs> you know, in ministry. We still got a few of them in California. We got everything in California. <laughs> and I, I just mentioned that as a, as a very well-known example. But be yourself. Be on the anointing of God. First principle is know the trust that Jesus is within you. Principle number two is be yourself. You're not a robot. But just praise the Lord. Some mechanical man just stand there until we oh, bless God. If he was going to bless me and use me. Got to come up on me all with all fours, you know. <laughs> Many times there is that lack, let's say, or hesitancy, because, well, the enemy will accuse and try to belittle the person's background or the person's person. And that holds you back. But I release that in the name of Jesus. You're the beloved of the Lord. One of the sisters just said she dreamed last night, God, you, someone else speak to her, I love you, I love you, I love you. And all those wonderful things. You know, that's what he does. You know, when Judas betrayed him, Judas did not just kiss Jesus in the original language there. He smothered him. He went all over his face. And that was the kiss of betrayal. And that's why the Lord says it's in the face of Jesus Christ, the communion that we have with him, to smother his with kisses of devotion. That's why the Holy Ghost says in Psalms 2, kiss the Son. Hallelujah. Oh, you better kiss him. <laughs> that just doesn't mean one little peck either. Praise God. It's just that devotion. Hallelujah. Desire to be with him. All right? If you are in yourself, hallelujah, that wonderful anointing of your person, your personality. God brings it forth, cleanses it. These are processes of channel anointings. 
that you're the channel of God. Hallelujah. And so praise God. This treasure is an earthen vessel. It flows through us. The backbone of God is upon us. We release the gifts of the Spirit, and that initiates someone else to be released. When we pray, that encourages someone else to pray. Because the glory is going through you, and you're connected with somebody else. Hallelujah. And so when the barbarous people saw that this channel, then he did not fall down dead suddenly. Acts 28, verse 6, you should underline. But God used the personality of Luke, and Luke said when they saw that he didn't die, that he didn't swell up, that type of poison swells up the blood vessel, the individual is bloated, the Darien province below Panama, the Foursquare missionary told me that there was a young man that was bitten by this type of snake. And they had to build the casket three times before they got him in the ground. The body swells that much. Tremendous poison. And that's why all he did was stand around a few minutes and, well, he's had it. We'll just stand around and see it. <laughs> that's why some people are. We'll just stand around and see the whole thing go down. <laughs> Hallelujah. But praise God, the church is not going to go down. Amen. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. The vipers of life may bite us, but we've got the resilience of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We just snap right back. <laughs> praise God. But Dr. Luke wrote M E T A B A L L O, Meta Ballo, M E T A. Dash B A L L O. They had a change, and that word change, the only place it's written in the Word of God, Dr. Luke reached back in his medical background, pulled out a medical term, and put it in there in the Greek. And it's where we get the word metabolism. They had a metabolism of their mind. They were not only changed their mind, they were not only had a difference of opinion, but the anointings of God through a vessel that they saw the Lord move through, through the viper in the fire, Paul did. He did not have any connection with them, but they were watching his life, and they had a four-year seminary course in the anointings of God. Their metabolism of their mind changed. The old life of the mind left them, and the metabolism means a tossing together of the many things and the balances of your body to produce the minerals of life. And when you have metabolism of the mind, brother, that means you're sane. You know the things of God. And they were revealed to them because God had to raise up leadership. He did it to somebody who the vipers of life tried to destroy. Let's praise God. Lord, we thank you. Kidamashantelivoriante. Lord, there's many vipers who will try to bite and try to destroy the holy man of God, the anointing of a sister or brother or young person. But my God, we protect them. We plead the blood. We speak the anointing. We thank you, Lord, for leadership that will throw the vipers in the fire. We thank you for the metabolism of the mind. Praise God. That's why the Lord allows certain things to happen because it's our reaction to those things that improves lives. I didn't see much benefit, my wife and I, when our son had the shotgun blow up in his face up here at Meeker, Oklahoma, and took his left eyeball. And we were in the country, and for a while he didn't think he'd make it. But praise God, He's with us, and we're believing God for a creative miracle. Praise God. Well, it's a low blow, and the blows continue to come. The day he came home, the coach had dismissed him because he couldn't see. Tremendous picture. In fact, real good, his dad thinks. But here, he could not see first base, so he couldn't be on the team. So praise God. There's a lot of other things, you know, that sort of... Each one of us have. But let's toss them in the fire. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost. We're not going to swell up. Neither are we going to shrink. 
My wife said to everything, everybody's being shaken today. Bless God, we're not going to be shaken. And she packed my suitcase and I kept going. We praise God, hallelujah, that we can believe the Lord. And amen. I just mentioned that in my encourage. Hallelujah. These things happen. Praise God that we might come forth with the strength and the joy. But someone else has got a metabolism of the mind. Amen. Amen. Someone else is being called into the ministry. I don't know who, but God does. Possibly through what we went through with or what you're going through with. It's going to benefit somebody. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't you kid yourself. Somebody thinks you're somebody. They're watching. Amen. And when you can praise God when there's those... Times, amen. It's the channel that God's preparing. And when you're, when you're desiring to be used of the Father, there's that channel that is being tried and tested and proven. Hallelujah. That when the anointings come, praise God, you'll not wilt under it. And when he grabs you, as, he, as Jonathan, as God said, Jonathan had a bow that he could trust. It wouldn't turn back on him, but he said, Israel... You're a deceitful bull. Every time I grab you, you flip on me. Can't use you as a mighty weapon. Because, see, a bull is cut against the grain, and then when you bend it till the string sings, hallelujah. That's the pressure. God wants each one of us. And when that bull is bent, 30 pounds, 35, 40, a 60-pound bull, oh, my the greater the weapon. And when you can sing, when your string can sing, <laughs> hallelujah, when you can sing under that pressure, when all oh, the tune comes for and God says, you're ready, I can use you. <laughs> hallelujah. And every time some people, as their lives are under pressure, murmur and complain and they flip on God and they cannot be used. So this is basic second principle to know that praise God your personality and that which God has given you is important and for you hallelujah to stand and having done all still stand for you the weapon of the Lord amen now we have weapons of our warfare but we are his weapons the anointings of his person when he grabs you hallelujah we're not going to flip on you Lord <laughs> oh praise God <laughs> hallelujah Amen. Because it's His strength within us anyway. But praise God. Now that channel of anointing, He works with us. He deals with us. We're under His workings to bring forth a maturity and a strength to be used so He can flow His pure gifts through us. So He can flow the income of prosperity. So He can flow the wisdom. Hallelujah. Whatever He needs He'll know he can use and pick up those and pick them out and use them or move them into the strategic body of the Lord. The gifts of the Spirit, you're the channel of the Lord. Now let's go to a very interesting condition of this channel that's to be used of the Lord. Principle number three is there is a communication with giving of the gifts back unto God that is probably principle number minus three. In other words, it should be only, should be, it's very important. I go to Mount Carmel. <clears throat> I see a man of like passions as we are. Call him out. Elijah. A man who prayed. James tells us he's just like we just like we are. But he prayed. And the heaven was shut up. And a great drought came in the land. And God said, Elijah, while this drought is upon the land, while I'm dealing and working with others, I'll take care of you. See, God could be, you think, well, now why am I in this situation? It could be that God just moving and taking care of the whole situation an event or a circumstance or a body and you're in that situation but God will take care of you until the whole thing moves together. Amen. 
Amen. Just by Mary and murmuring, she held up the whole camp of Israel for six days, was it? Six or seven days? Till she was cleansed. So he, the Lord said, Elijah, go out to the brook. And he said, the brook will flow. And he said, I'll cause the ravens. God healed their very nature. He changed their nature to feed Elijah. Raven's nature, just scraps and garbage. But the ravens went, and they knew where they could get some good sourdough bread and some good beef. Amen. They knew where Emma Miller lived, I guess, because we had some good beef and roast last night. But those ravens went, and they got food that was against their nature. And they came and they gave the meat and the bread to Elijah. They fed him. But his miracle dried up. And there's some people after their miracle dries up and God wants to take them deeper, they hold on to that little miracle and starve to death. They stick around thinking that something else is going to happen just as good as that was. And, and they never go on to see that there's other avenues of glory. <clears throat> God said, I've commanded the ravens. The brook will quench your thirst. But as the times got harder, God said, all right, Elijah, now I've commanded a widow. <coughs> this is beautiful here. This is one of the most exciting phrases of the Word of God. There's others, of course. But God says, I've commanded the widow. And when Elijah got over there, she's ready to die. It's just like some of us. We're under the command of God and we're just about ready to die. <laughs> Why? We don't know what we're going to do. We don't have direction. We don't. And yet, our hearts are burning within us. Hallelujah. Now just hang in there. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. But Elijah didn't stay where the miracle was and had dried up. And, and that's why God dealt with Abraham. Give me Isaac. And Abraham had his little Isaac, his little darling. And some of us have those little darlings that God has given us. God gave it to them. And it binds them from going on and being used mightily for the Lord. People that have been used, people that have had the, the anointings of God in their life, but to stay around with the miracles already dried up, God wants to take them further. But they hold on to those little darlings. And they're still doing their little thing that they've done for years instead of going on and seeing that God's revelation is beautiful. Praise God. Appreciate the background. I think all of us appreciate that which God has led us thus far. But amen, we're responsible for what he's saying to us today. Amen. Hallelujah. And so shall we open our minds? Be teachable. Amen. Be balanced. But be teachable. Those are the two main phases in the body. Now, this is the strength and the anointing that the command of God was upon the widow. And Elijah went, and there he said, Make me a cake. Now, then she went. She said, I just have enough. She knew what she had. Peter, he says to the lame man at the gate, beautiful. He said, such as I have. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. There's the difference. Hallelujah. You know, they the same thing. She knew what she had. She said, I just have enough. And she was right. I just have enough for one cake. But she, Elijah says, now you make me a cake. Now, if you'd have stopped there, then possibly we could have, he would have been under a uh, sort of that which would be egotistical or just to himself but he says you make me a cake and then make one for you and your boy he spoke it see when when the word goes forth they had two cakes then she knew how much one cake and that's all they had but God doubled what she had every time they ate God doubled it so whether you and I were going to be fed by loaves and fishes that are blessed and the multitudes fed, or whether we're going to have one cake at a time, friend, 
Don't worry. God knows how to fix. Or if the ravens come, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. So allow that to come in your heart. You're under the command of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And oh, the beauty of it, that the oil kept running enough for two cakes every time. And the meal was there enough for two cakes every time until the drought was over. All right, you have that miracle, then you have the feeding by the widow, and then you have Mount Carmel. The same way that David said, it's the lion, it's the bear. Now, in the anointings of the gifts of the Spirit, there is a progressiveness. Just because there's a desire within you to move in the gifts of the Spirit, there's no sign. Sometimes you can get up and the potential is there, but there is a maturing process in the Word and the praise and the victory and that which God gives a wisdom and flow in the anointings of the Holy Ghost. And that's why the Bible says, let one prophesy and let the other judge. Now, to me, I understand that to be not just every Tom, Dick, and Harry that knows the Lord. It's the other prophet that knows the, the, trans, the, the uh, uh, <laughs> transitional periods and, and the frustrations and the pressures and the loneliness at times and, and, and the great anointings and the, the fervents of that which brings forth that anointing. Let the other prophet judge, not just anybody. But praise God. Some people, are that's all they do. They're fruit inspectors. They don't like anything. They go from pillar to post and from meeting to meeting and, and they can just lay out. Make you feel like Flintstone. Just crack and fall in the heat. And when you're used of the Lord, you'll always have God's little helpers coming around and telling you what you did and what you didn't do so that you missed it. Hallelujah. But you sit there like a bump on a log and quench the Holy Ghost. Nobody will say anything. I mean, you know, there'll be no criticism. It's only when you get out there where you can be shot at that the little person will shoot at you. And that's why the Lord says, cast not away your confidence. Why did he say that? On the authority of the gifts and the ministry flowing through you. Don't throw your weapon down. It's in the Greek. That's what it means. Cast not away your confidence means don't throw your weapon down while you're being shot at. Silly. The greatest attacks of the Apostle Paul was not in the theaters of Ephesus and those places where the crowds got after him. The thing that he really hated it was the brethren that kept criticizing him. And he had to say, I magnify my all. Cast not away your confidence that the anointing of God's upon you. Not in a proud arrogance, but praise God in a confidence that you know, hallelujah, that the Lord Jesus moves in your life with a humble heart. You're not moved. Now first begin to move in the gifts of the Spirit. Glenn and Irma know, just, you know, you just sort of stumble around. They were a great help to us. And, but praise God, you know. It, but there's some that, hallelujah, they're right there to clobber you. Preparing for the Vietnam airlift. I was holding a revival. And... Uh, I went down one side and called people out, went all the way around this church, and my, the Lord was blessing, and hearts were crying, and my, well, you could have, you know, you could tell that God was touching people, and the word of knowledge was so real, and come around to a couple, and said, now, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. And I remember that scripture over them, and then the Lord blessed them, and Oh, how he was going to use them and everything. And oh, praise the Lord. It was beautiful. And so when the meeting was dismissed, well, the pianist come over to me. And she hollered for the pastor. And we had a meeting of the Sanhedrin. And she went up one side and down the other. And most of it was sand. And boy. I don't like this anyway. You know, I don't like this pile of stuff.
style of worship, calling people out and prophesying over them. Anyway, she said, that couple is not even saved. You miss it. I want you to know it. Boy, she just wanted the pastor to hear how she really uh, just went and demoralized and criticized very heavily. Well, see, I took her word for it. She was so vehement and so abusive and strong. Just because somebody's got a loud mouth, there's no sign they're always right. Amen. Usually they're the ones everybody hears. You know, they've got the world to get up and, and say it like it's law and it's straight from the throne and they don't know what they're talking about. And boy, I went home just barely dragging. My wife saw all she could do to encourage me. And boy, she and finally, I was so discouraged about it. I said, well, you know, if I can't... Yeah, you know, I, I, Lord, I, I don't want to miss God and I don't want to, you know, be... Ministering in here, she said that those that couple and everything was wrong for him, and, and it was really discouraging. A young minister flowing in that dimension, and you know, can I hear his Lord? Why? How come I missed it? So many others I didn't miss it. And my wife looked at me, and she didn't know any circumstances beyond what I told her. But she said, I don't care if they look you in the eye and they're saying no, no, no. She says. You have the anointing of God and you take your authority. It works. And she said, you bless a lot of people. The anointing of the Lord's upon you. And you go forth and you release what God tells you to release. And then you just tell them to pray for you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. She said, you're not going to miss God. Um, so see, I needed that. She, she didn't know what well was right or wrong. doesn't matter. My heart was right. We wanted to bless. We wanted to be used of God. You'd be surprised the many ministries that have come to me and say, you know, this dimension come upon me for a while, but boy, I hit a snag. And I just, it just left. Praise God. I got back that Sunday night. That's on Friday night. I got back Sunday night to that church to close the meeting out. I felt like throwing in my hat. Didn't have one, but it felt like. I went in, here she comes. I said, oh, have mercy. <laughs> but when I noticed her face, her countenance was different. She didn't have that flush red. <laughs> I love you, brother. But, you know, some people start out with, I love you. That's why I'm going to tear you to pieces and criticize. Well, what kind of love is that, brother? Just shut your mouth. I don't need your love. Some people say, oh, I love you. That's why I'm going to straighten you. There's ways. There's ways that God uses. Just, hallelujah. That if a person's heart is sincere, there'll be ways that you can, we can talk to one another. Hallelujah. Tenderly. Remember Jacob, he, the ewes, the, the sheep that were with child, those that are burden for souls he let those that have ministries that we see the anointings upon them lead them softly don't give them a gospel crowded chop chop them down hallelujah anyhow <laughs> she says you know she didn't bring the pastor this time she said it's hard for me to come tonight but the pastor suggested that I do this but she said, I was wrong, brother. She said, the pastor told me that he had been to that couple's home that day. They had accepted the Lord, and I didn't know it. And she started bawling, went over and played the piano better than she ever had before. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So it was good for her, although she had made a mistake, she didn't probably make that same mistake anymore. So it's good for all of you know. Isn't it wonderful that God can deal with all of us? Hallelujah. His own precious way. Hallelujah. See, praise God. So that taught me something to have a stability. But see, to give that anointing back unto God, I learned that. And in Annie's visions of the Argentina girl that 
She said the Lord spoke to her that, that those who give their gifts back unto the Lord and praise Him, that is the greatest pleasure, is to receive that dependence. And when they're used of the Lord, to praise Him and pray over that experience they've gone through when God used them. So now that takes us to Mount Carmel. Now here's a man, Elijah, on Mount Carmel. And he's calling fire down from heaven because he's already been fed by the ravens. He's already had the experience of the widow. And he's already had that those anointings that has built up his life. Hallelujah. So now he comes to a higher experience on Mount Carmel. And praise God. The same that God that fed him with the ravens, the anointing of that trust now is in his heart. So he speaks, and the stones are even licked up, and the fire and the water and all of the tremendous occasion of Mount Carmel. And he reached into his spirit, and when he saw that fire of God, Elijah became the prophet of fire. Hallelujah. Oh, the exuberance of that occasion came upon him. And he spoke it, and he said, I hear a sound of abundance of rain in my spirit. Hallelujah. The fire of God has come to earth, and therefore it's going to rain. Hallelujah. Praise God. When the fire of God, that's the gifts of the Spirit, are within you, and you release them, that's the light of rain. That's the anointing of the rain. He said it's going to rain till he had servant. Tell Ahab to go down to Jezreel, it's going to rain. And everybody scurried around for it. They begin, after they done away with the prophets of Baal, they begin to scurry and jump in. Ahab went over and jumped in his chariot, B8. <laughs> Boy, the horses groaned and begin to stomp and paw, heading for Jezreel. Everybody left Mount Carmel and the servant gathering around all of those things that pertain unto life for his prophet of God, Elijah. This servant heads toward Jezreel. Elijah said, hey, where are you going? Going to Jezreel. He said, no, no, no. Here is the key to all of the experience of the gifts of the Spirit through the believer. Elijah said, no, no. He says, you come on. He said, we're going the other way. And they went up a little higher, possibly, over the overlooking the beautiful Mediterranean. And Elijah gets down on his knees. And he says, my God, send the rain. Here is the key to every anointing of the Spirit of God. Is it your dependence is upon God in your prayer life? And if you speak a word of the Lord, you must back it up with prayer. And he says, servant, is there any change? There's no change, master. Come on, let's go. You've already, man, anybody can call down fire from heaven. No, he says, I've got to give this anointing back to God. God, send the rain. Father, send the rain. Four times, send the rain. Five times, oh God, send the rain. Six, seven times. Servant, is there any change? But the only thing I can see is a cloud about the size of a man's hand. <laughs> Glory to God, it's coming. Hallelujah. He's just, Elijah jumped up and he said, that's all right. He said, that's all I need. He gathered his garments around him and he outran Arab's V8 chariot all the way to Jezreel. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is that third key is to give the anointings unto God. And when you're used of the Lord to interpret or to bring forth a prophetic word, you back it up with your prayer life. If you lay hands upon someone, and maybe I've even forgotten what I've said, but I'll say, God, that young lady or that couple or that brother, that grandfather, grandmother, Whoever it was, God, that I, I can see him now as the word of the Lord flowed upon him, and they were so thrilled. God, I guard that word. Bring it to pass, Lord. Bring it to pass. I guard it, Lord. My, hallelujah. 
how the anointing of the Lord takes the pressure and all the pride and the arrogance away from you because you've given it back to God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's the authority of the gifts of the Spirit that will be sound and pure and filtered of all pride and self-expressionism and exhibitionism. God's man of faith and power, you bless this ministry. <laughs> Amen. I said, Lord, it was a great charismatic conference. Some of the guys I'd even ministered to were over there, close to where I live. I said, Lord, I, I'd like to go over there and have fellowship. And wonder why I'm not invited to speak over there. And Jesus, he jumped a straddle of me, that's Oklahoma term, and he turned me every way but loose. And I wonder why the Lord did he use the <laughs> but boy, he he said, You hush. He says, I've taken too many pains to keep you to myself. And I don't want you in that rat race. I didn't understand it too much. But now I do. There's almost every, everybody over there. Once you go to a certain place, you can't go anywhere else. Everybody's sort of got their little click. And these clicks are being slapped. Amen. Brother, I'm glad. Hallelujah. I went through that phase. Who's your covering? Everywhere I'd go, who's your covering? I'd say, Mom Insurance. Lorraine knows Mom Insurance. Well, who's Mom Insurance, you know? Is that some kind of new revelation? <laughs> Mother Assurance, some beautiful woman of God who raised the assembly of God church, a nurse God had used and given her such gifts of the Spirit. She'd pray over her stove, and her stove would work. She'd start to the meeting, she said, Well, Lord... At the end of the month, and the fixed income, nothing to give in the offering. But, Lord, I want to give $5. She's just stopped. I'm not leaving. And Lord, I need $5 to give in the offering. She dropped her handkerchief. She leaned over to pick up the handkerchief. Under the bed was a $5 bill. <laughs> this one day after the other, just miracles all the time. Ravens coming and going. Amen. Just somebody has to, get, you know, direct traffic. There's a big ravens with miracles. <laughs> Praise God. Isn't that a beautiful thing? She's with Jesus now. But Mom Sherrance's ministry was making these little plastic. She didn't make them, but she bought them down at the bookstore. These little plastic holders of little sponge in there that you put oil on. And she'd put perfume in with the, the oil so the oil wouldn't get rancid. And she'd fix them all up for me. She put white shoulders perfume. My wife liked white shoulders. So all, all the perfume, all the anointing, all had white shoulders on And she would give me these little containers so ministers could have them in their pockets. And I have passed them around all over the world. Mom Sherrance's faithfulness has ministered. Don't tell how many have been healed just by her faithfulness. And I've kept back just a few of where God wants me to put them. Hallelujah. But I say, Mom Assurance covers me because the phone will ring and praise God. Here's Mother Assurance. Say, oh, Brother Flynn says, I don't know what's going on, but so and so and so forth. She'd tell me what's going on. I knew what was going on. And the Lord knew what was going on. And he'd, he'd allow her. And she would pray over my wife and me when I was gone and just cover our home in some trying days. Of getting adjusted, of being known, and and you know, of not being booked up three years ahead of time. If I'd be good to be booked up three days ahead of time. But praise God for faithful ones that God has called to minister to us. Amen. Not some big guy so we can say, well, we're connected with them. Fool on. Now, I praise God, God kept me to myself with mom assurances and others. Hallelujah. Because everybody else is getting slapped at. But praise God for the anointing that will keep you and I. 
Hallelujah. I don't know if you're understanding what I'm saying, but praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You might not be in the limelight, but praise God, just be glad you're over there with David among the mulberry trees, brother. Hallelujah. What are you doing, David? I'm waiting on the Lord. What are you doing among mulberry trees? You don't like mulberry trees. I know that. I should be out there in the battle. There's them Philistines out there having a heyday in the valley of Riphael. Well, I went out there the other day and bless God. Hallelujah. It was wonderful. I drew my sword and it was just like a great wave, a great dam of anointing burst and he, and David said it just carried us along. In fact, David was the first surfer. Hallelujah. <laughs> but no, he said it was easy. There was a great wave behind us and we just praise God. We beat those Philistines. I asked God that first time I prayed for anybody. Hallelujah. My, they were set free. My, their legs grew up. Now I've got the ministry of growing legs. Not making fun of it, but just be careful. You don't get into a rut. And that's what God was commanding David. And the next time the enemy come up, David said, Oh, that's my ministry, killing Philistines. Hallelujah. Give me my sword. God said, You hush and go stand among the mulberry trees. I've got something to teach you. And people think the first time that the anointing of God comes upon an audience... Pull out that sword and get on that wave. Hallelujah. I was used last service, and bless God, here I go again. Oh, the Holy Ghost. And they'll go on, and they'll go on, and the Spirit will wane, and the Spirit will wane, and until the platform's down. And they've done their thing, and the body has suffered. Now hear me. This really happens. You know, they gave a message one time and it was interpreted. That message in tongues, my, it was interpreted and everybody shouted the house down. Oh, wait till the next time. Boy, the minute the pastor quits and, or whoever's leading the sin, I'm ready. Hallelujah. And they'll let it fly again. And plop. <laughs> Stand among the mulberry trees. Because, see, there's something you and I have to know is God's not concerned about us being used and about the enemy. He's concerned about us hearing the goings in the tops of the mulberry trees. And the Hebrew word for goings is the marchings of the armies of heaven. And what Jehovah God wanted David to know is, David, the same thing I had to deal with Joshua on maybe a little different way and manner. Joshua was... I called him to succeed Moses, of course. But he got so exuberant about it. He saw a man with his sword drawn, and Joshua goes over there, Hey, buddy, are you with us or with them? He wanted to label him. And there Jesus is the captain of the host of the Lord, standing with his sword drawn. Jesus said, Would you take off your shoes and hush and fall on your face? You're on holy ground, buddy. I'm the one's going to lead this group in. Bless <laughs> God. You know, we, oh, we're going to do this and that, the other big wonders, you know. But you've got to recognize when you're under the anointing, being used in the gifts of the Spirit, to hear. And when you hear the goings of the marchings of the armies of heaven, the captain, the host of the Lord, Wants everyone to flow, hallelujah, in his timing, in his way. And not just because we're having a good and wonderful praise meeting, and, and then because God used your last service, there's no sign you're going to ride that wave again, brother. He wants you to hush till you hear the voice of the turtle dove and the rose of Sharon and the captain of the host of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, in other words, a maturity there that it's not only the enemy he's concerned about, but praise God. And I've walked among the many a mulberry tree, but thanks to the Lord, hallelujah, there's a sensitivity, there's a security 
that you don't have to be used to prove the anointing of God. You'll have your turn. I figure, bless God, the more I bless other ministries, the more that the anointing of the Lord will, my turn will be coming up. Diatrephus, who loved the preeminence down to everybody else's ministry. Now, you might think this is a strange seminar on releasing the gifts, but brother, they'll be released if you have these principles in your heart. We won't have to go out and clean up after you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Sure, it's wonderful to encourage one another, but praise the Lord. There is that anointing. And there is that times that you will have answered prayer. There are those areas, hallelujah, that you are to go forth, but... There are times when Captain the host of the Lord There are some cases that just You're not to take And try to handle Be sensitive to the Lord Hallelujah So that you'll not be torn And discouraged in your spirit Well God answered prayer over here How come you didn't hear? Well I guess then the enemy said Well you just not called, that's all. There's just a chance over here, just some others were with you. No. Praise God, the enemy will always be there. But let's be sensitive to the anointing he's given us for the occasion. Hallelujah. It could be Mother Assurance or it could be someone else. It's anointing. I'm always sensitive. When you're ministering, praise God, allow, oh, be aware of other strengths and anointings. The other day, I was really faced with a situation, and a little frail grandmother was standing there. And I tell you, I couldn't hardly breathe. And the Holy Ghost said, tell her to pray. And she had a little old weak voice you could, you know, and I just prayed for her. I said, Sister, the Lord wants you to pray and to loose and to command so and so and so forth. And you just let the Lord use you. Pray for me. Boy, she laid hands on me and I thought, well, my, where did this come from? She had an anointing, brother. She had probably interceded in prayer many years before I was even thought of. And she set me free. And she set the situation free. And she, she, she did a little more than that. I mean, it is beautiful. Let's praise the Lord for all the body being used. Amen. We thank you, Father. Everybody just pray in tongues. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the mouth of Sukuri, Alabar, Randa, the Masia. Oh, Shanama, Handa, the Masia. Puri, Alabar, Randa, the Mashanda, the Maha. We give the anointings back unto thee, Lord. We praise you. Every prophecy, every interpretation, every prayer of deliverance, we receive it unto thee, Lord. We lay it on the altar that you would deliver, that you would set free, that you would bring forth the word of the Lord. And we praise you for it. For ye, I have tread the wine press alone. For the time of harvest is at hand. I've taken the little clusters and I've protected. I've taken the little divisions and those segments of my body. And I've brought the whole harvest together. For I will crush them, 
I will crush them, and your fruit shall remain, and your fruit shall remain. For he that cometh from Basra, for he that cometh from Basra, his garments are stained. For I will crush my anointed ones, I'll crush them, and the wine shall flow together. For I will use them, and they shall flow out into the, all the earth, and I will preserve the anointings of the Lord for the marriage supper of the Lamb. Hallelujah. 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 Song of the Lord, release it. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Someone else has a scripture that you'll sing. Just sing it unto the Lord. It might be two or three. You just allow the Lord to sing through you. The song of the Lord's on us this morning. Hallelujah. Now, when one is used, then the whole congregation will, will join in with that which has been spoken. The crux of the matter that has been prophesied or sung, or the word that is being prophesied or sung, the song of the Lord's upon us. Now, just release it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. 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 Break through, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my feet. And a light unto my Let's all join with that theme. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. of scripture just to let the law holy ghost move through you hallelujah the joy of the lord the table is before us and the joy of the lord is upon us coming. It's a fresh dimension. When the Lord uses one and the whole congregation responds, see, with that theme. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Uh,
dimension. Maybe you haven't been used in this dimension. Just release it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. For a few minutes now, let's just have a workshop of those. Whatever the Lord lays upon your heart. But as we gave yesterday when the Spirit of God, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, pray or desire, it's a command to interpret. So let interpretation a prophetic word. We want you to get your release. If you've never prophesied or interpreted, or if you've never had that word of knowledge flow through you, let's just be recipient now. Let's be open and cooperative and yield to the anointings of the Holy Spirit. Put both feet on the floor and just let the anointing of God speak through you. What is the Father saying to encourage and edify the church, to edify his people? Speak as though the Lord was speaking through you in the first person. And allow the gifts of the Holy Ghost and the anointings of God to speak through you. Now let's all speak the message in tongues and then the anointings of the Lord one right after the other. Hallelujah. This is the workshop but we are very concerned about the release of everyone and just the flowing of the gifts of the Spirit so we'll give everyone the opportunity <laughs> Those things that you have seen are but a small tasting of those things which I shall lead you to, for I am the light that has prepared the path that I desire you to walk, that you may minister to my sheep. And there be none, yea, none, even the small children in the old women who are in this room who may not manifest such gifts as I am showing you in these days, for I am causing you to do it. Bring them forth and minister to my sheep, for it will be the delight of my heart, and I will be able to bless you as I desire to bless you only if you do these things that I have called you to. All right. Let's all just speak in the Spirit now, and then one right after the other, release these gifts. Get up out of See, you're speaking the message now that later on you'll interpret. Get up out of my seat. Get up out of my seat. Get up out of my seat. Amen. Father, we thank you for the good word of the Lord that you give us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For I would say unto thee, if thou art as gold in a melting pot, I would desire to bring thee forth as pure gold, without any impurity whatsoever. The gold is to form beautiful ornaments. You are to be honest unto me that at the moment the beauty cannot be seen, for the gold is in the melting pot. Submit yourselves unto the fire, that that which is impure may be sifted from that which is pure. That that which is pure would remain, that you might come forth as pure gold, tried in the fire, to be ornaments of beauty unto me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. A good word. 
Even my children, as the kernel is in the ear, so are the fruits that shall develop within you. For as the mighty rushing wind of the Holy Spirit blows the dust of the pollen, which is even the gold of my mouth and of my word, upon you, so shall this cause the kernel to form in the ear. And not until that day until such fruits develop, and as you take them down inside of you, and let that wind blow upon you, and exercise that which I have given you, will these kernels develop upon the ear. And then when that which is on the surface is stripped away, it shall be a full ear, and it shall yeah. feed my sheep. Praise the Lord. Someone else, move right oh, in. I tell you, my children, I have given you the bread of life. I have prayed, I have faith, a perfect vote. The perfect ingredients went into the bread of life. I say, partake of that bread of life, partake of it, grow up on it, feed up on it, because I am going to make, I am going to bake a new loaf. That new loaf is not ready for the perfect oven yet, for the heat that is going to be put against it. I am putting the ingredients together of a new loaf, and it will be a beautiful loaf. The whole world will see it. It will come and it will rise up and be beautiful. The world will smell the aroma of it. And it will have the same effect upon the world that the first loaf I built. But then I will remove it from this world. That says the Lord. And my children know that your God is no respectful person. What he's done for one, he'll do for all. What he does for others, he'll do for you. Lead not on the understanding of the carnal mind, neither in the knowledge of men, but lean on me, my children, for I do love you, and I do desire to give good gifts unto thee. I will bring it about. I will perform that which I have committed unto thee. I will bring it to death. Therefore, lean on me. Lean not on the strong of, of the arm of flesh, but lean on me, my children, for I care for thee. We receive it, Father. Praise the Lord. We receive it, Lord. What we feel that's in these conferences is that there's so many of us from different backgrounds or different areas. And that's why we want to, to flow in and allow the practical experience of the anointings of God for you to watch. The main service is not necessarily in that which is the teaching service alone. That's only about one-third of what we'd like to have you consider. We'd like to have you to consider the, the minstrel anointing that is in the musical flowing and harmony of how choruses you can sing He is Lord at an inopportune time. You can start singing hallelujah when you should be having a prophecy and mess up a whole meeting. So see, Glenn and Irma and the staff here in the ministries, different types, different ways of ministry, but we all want you to have the variety and see the practicalness so that each one of us can flow in that dimension. Now these are some that have brought forth the word this morning and, and yesterday then the praying for the sick and, and also the or the prayer line we had yesterday morning the releasing of any inhibitions and then last night that wonderful area of deliverance these are specialized ministries that you're not oh you're not to say oh that's well that's just a certain type of ministry that they have you're to learn and to watch you're being taught the service isn't over. Amen. And you'll miss the whole concept of God's anointing and purpose for having you here. Well, I just don't, I'm just not th that way. Yes, you are that way. You might run up against it with a grandchild or with a neighbor or somebody. You better know what to do. You're a believer of God. Or out on the highway somewhere that somebody's crying out. And you'll know how to set them free and how to lead them to the Lord. It's the practical experiences that are more important or just as much as important. So the three phases, the menstrual anointing, the worship service, the preaching or the teaching of the Word, and the after service of divine ministry and anointings and deliverance. Be sure that you get this in your mind. 
And it's very important for you to come around and even come up and stand around someone who's being used and anointed of the Lord because that is an environment, hallelujah, of anointing that will help you when you need it. for that great message, Lord. We thank you for that prophetic word, O oh God. Hallelujah. On the body of our God. Hallelujah. Oh, how great is the body of the Lord. The life of the Lord. The blood is the life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty, is mighty. He will save and he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing the Lord our God. Is 
the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many hundreds of free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.